it stands alone as a performance, you know, by itself. But the fact that for 40 years, your legacy, um, you have given a voice to all of us that have felt uh, in, in, like outcasts, that have felt un, like an underdog, um, and you have given us, given us inspiration. And, um, you know, whether we're, I'm not a jock, I'm, I'm a gay Latino man, and, 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 you know, Rocky showed me that I could be anything I wanted to be, and, uh, and I have the eye of the tiger because of you. Uh. And, uh, <laughs> and it's my pleasure to introduce to give you this award, the Montecito Award, uh, the original Apollo Creed, Carl Weathers. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal some time because <laughs> Sylvester Stallone uh, invited me to be a part of this by requesting that I stand here and present him with this award, and so I got to tell you. There have been things I've been honored to do in my life, and we all have those things, but this is one of the greatest honors I've had to this date. <laughs> so, you know, when you, when you sit there and you have the history that backs up a conversation that you folks and I have just had the honor to to witness and to be a part of and to learn from and to sort of acknowledge what someone has done in his professional life over, certainly over the past 40 years, but there were a few years before that when we were all struggling actors and uh, trying to find our way in the world and, and, and ultimately have something define us. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm gonna be selfish and talk about myself for a moment here, if I may. Just a moment, okay? But you know, there I was in 1976 <laughs> uh, looking for a shot. And I got a script and my agents at the time said, uh, you know, this is a really good script, but they don't want to meet you. Meaning the producers at that time, Bob Shardoff and Erwin Winkler. And I cajoled and cried and whined and weaseled my way into getting a copy of the script. Finally, it came to me. I read it, and oh my God, there was this role, Apollo Creed, in this great, great screenplay. I mean, it's the best thing I'd ever read. And I wasn't the best reader in the world, but I could read what's good, right? <laughs> so I read this screenplay, and I gotta tell you, folks, I said, this is me. I mean, this guy is me. I have to do this, right? As every young kid at that time, and certainly as every young black kid who wanted to be Muhammad Ali, who wanted to be the heavyweight champion of the world, there someone had written a role that embodied the best of the best, the greatest of the greatest, and that was going to be on the big screen. Well, let me tell you, there ain't no way I was going to be denied. <laughs> no way. So I got a chance after the producers, the, the director, the great John Alvelson, had seen everybody in town, all the great boxers, all the wonderful actors, and somehow they couldn't decide on someone to cast this role. So at the 11th hour, 
on a Friday afternoon about five o'clock when everybody is saying, okay, what are we, when are we going to get home for the weekend and go do what we're going to do and be with our families or have a drink or whatever people are going to do, you know, go to Palm Springs or whatever they were doing at the time. Um, we got to meet these last group of actors who are going to roll through here and it's a cattle call, which means everybody and his son and his father is going to show up for this audition. And most of them on their last legs, some of them have no legs. <laughs> but I see all these guys standing there and I'm still just pumped up and I want this role, man. I want this role. So finally, it's my turn. I go in and the producers are there and the director is there and an assistant that is there and they talk to me for a bit. And finally, a guy walks in and they introduce him and he's the writer. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> and I give it my best shot, right? But remember, it's Friday afternoon, it's 5, 5.30. They've seen a thousand actors, young, old, and in between who want this role. So by this time, everybody's fatigued. The writer sits down this very small table. I stand there, got the script, chomping at the bit. Give it my best, best shot, okay? I was a professional athlete. I know how to kick ass, and I'm kicking ass this day, all right? I finish, and everybody's kind of quiet. The writer's kind of, okay. Producers and the director over, and kind of I hear a little giggle, and I really thought I blew it. I mean, I really thought I blew it. I didn't know what to do, but professional athlete, you jump up, you get more aggressive. So I said, you know, if you get me a better actor, I can do a much better job. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, everybody's kind of quiet, and then they start laughing. And the writer sort of looks up at me with this, who the hell do you think you are? Kind of look, you know? Like, how do you, what are you talking about? Remember, they didn't say the writer was going to star in the movie. <laughs> he wasn't Sylvester Stallone, the movie star. He was the writer. <laughs> I believe to this day, the only reason this man allowed me to play this role was because he wanted to beat the hell out of me for nah. insulting him. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it to this day. No. Hey, I got to tell you, it just goes to show you, truly out of the mouths of babes, ignorance can lead to absolute bliss. <laughs> um, 40 years ago, I had the really, really great fortune, and I, I can't express it enough of how much gratitude I have for not only a screenplay that I read that was absolutely brilliant and as you all can attest to, we need to give him a round of applause for the first one. I've read a lot of screenplays and I've seen a lot of movies <laughs> and how many of them that any of us have seen that actually, and I've never, we've never said, I've never said this to you before, but how many people in this room know the movie Spartacus? Yeah. If you think about it, there was this gladiator that really was supposed to be a guy who could never stand up against everything that he went up against. And at the end of the movie, when they were looking for Spartacus, everyone stood up and said, I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Well, how many people have said, I am Rocky? I am Rocky. Okay. That is the work. That is the seminal work. That is the brilliant work. That is the work of, of, a, of a writer, a creator, who created an Academy Award winning film at a very, very young age, 
I had the great privilege of working with him many times, and I also had the great privilege of being directed by him many times. And to this day, I still say, as good as an actor as he is, he is as good, if not better, director, and I don't, I, I can't imagine why you haven't directed more. You I need know. to. We need to see more of your work. So, with that being said, and since I had no script, I just had to talk from the heart, man, so I hope, I hope that's cool. I want to welcome Sylvester Stallone, an artist, an actor, a director. You know, people talk about these Renaissance men. I mean, I know that he paints. He is an avid horseman. He's a family man. He's really a brilliant guy who I've been inspired by time and time again, and it's just between us because I would never let him know. I would never in a million years admit it to him one-on-one, -on -one. but I want to let you know that I think so many of us in the industry and people who have been fans of his have been inspired by him, his work, and what he has shown us in terms of what it means to keep punching and to keep punching and to keep punching as a creative force in this industry and in my life, Mr. Sylvester Stallone. Peter, thank you. My God. Thank you, Carl. That's incredible. Thank you, my man. Wow. Carl. You owe the favor. Oh, I do. <laughs> Ain't gonna be no rematch. Ain't good. Well, I wouldn't say that. I never realized Carl Weathers was so loquacious. I would have cast him as Hamlet. <laughs> My goodness, this man is just full of soul. I don't know. I, I've been so blessed. I really, it's, it's extraordinary. Where is my wife? Is she out there? Where are you hiding, Jennifer? There you are. Yeah, I see you. Oh, oh, yeah, let me see. Is that you? Is that you? Okay. I did that because she's painfully shy. She was voted most shy on, let me see, was it the entire universe? Yeah, that was the entire, okay. I've been very, very blessed to be surrounded by people that actually have made me better than I should be. And I'm not joking. I used to think, oh, God, it wouldn't it be great to take all the credit? It would be nice, but it doesn't work that way, folks. Uh, we are in a collective industry where it's a collective art form. In other words, where, you know, you write something, but you need another 300 people to pull it off and hopefully everyone's on the same page. People like Carl Weathers, Talia Shire, Burt Young, Burgess Meredith, you know, phenomenal people, <laughs> phenomenal. It, it, it's, it, it was so serendipitous that they all came together, even, you know, and John Alveson, great director, perfect guy at the, at the right time. Everyone, just fantastic. Bill Conti, what can I say? The man took our film, which at that time was a simple little film that was not supposed to be released other than the second, second feature of the drive-in. And I'm, I'm not joking. That's what it was designed for and elevated to something beautiful just through the sound of what was in his heart, the music. It was amazing. But it's the actors, the heart, that, that really put it across. And... I think of myself, even today, as a very, very fortunate man, but I don't forget where I came from. And I know a lot of you don't either, that, that it's, it's rough. Life is a struggle. 
we think we have it all together, but in a sense, we're not. We're, we're, we're underdogs, and every day we have to somehow, somehow pull it together and go through another day and hope that it turns out right. And, and I really love the idea that we're all part of this kind of human experience. And if we as actors and writers, interpreters, musicians, whatever, can somehow tap in to that universal quest for just peace of mind, for just some sense of respect within our lifetime, then we have what is known as a dream. And everyone needs a dream. We need it. It's what keeps us going. It's what made life bearable. It's what's created civilizations is a dream. And I just want to say thank you for making my dream come true. And I hope to keep hoping to interpret your dreams too in the future in films. Thank you so very much.